Well, hey folks, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Let's talk about the aftermath of this winter storm, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Well, they're doing rolling blackouts now. The good news is I had power twice today, once for about an hour and once for about two and a half hours. So we were able to warm up the house with the heater a little bit and I was able to get a charge on all, all my devices and connect to the internet for a little while and uh, answer some of your comments and watch a couple of videos actually. So, uh, but now it's out again, no telling how long it's gonna be out. Um, I have a friend of mine who is in infrastructure in one of the cities around Houston here, one of the larger suburban cities. And uh, he's saying that it looks, it's looking like there's probably gonna be rolling blackouts through tomorrow, maybe even into Saturday. So uh, yeah, we're in, for a, we're in for a fun time. Wow, there is a beautiful little indigo bunting that just flew into my bush by my garage. Wow, what a treat. What a beautiful bird. God, if you've never seen an indigo bunting, they're just stunning. So yeah, let's go take a look at the garden. Uh, there's good news out there, there's bad news out there, and it's an ugly mess. Out here in the garden, uh, there is nothing cold hardy down to 14 degrees that uh, I expected to survive. I had high hopes for the carrots and the Brussels sprouts and the collard greens and it looks like we might have some carrots that made it through. It looks like we might have some collard greens and Brussels sprouts that made it through. Man, those are some tough little plants. They were frozen as hard as leather the other day. Um, but it's uh, currently about oh, just over freezing and we don't expect to dip into freezing tonight but tomorrow night we have another storm coming which will drop us down below freezing again. So it might be another cold couple of nights and then we'll be out of the woods on this thing. But I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot about being prepared for crises. And I've learned uh, because, well, we always like to practice preparations and trying to be self-sufficient, at least in some way. But when you are actually tested and the reality happens and you have an infrastructure failure, in our case, it's an entire state is experiencing some form of infrastructure failure, um, that's when you really have to put your ideas to practice and it really uncovers for you where you're lacking in one place or another. So I've learned some lessons this time around. One lesson I've learned is not to trust the government. Um, I've done this in the past and uh, listened to the government. We were in the Katrina evacuation from Houston and we had to pass through Houston. We were trying to get to Dallas. But in 23 and a half hours of driving, most of that stood still. Most of that seeing people pulled off on the side of the road, uh, riots at grocery stores. I had to pull my gun at a gas station to uh, protect my wife and daughter. And uh, yeah, it was, it, was, um, it was crazy out there. But the government had told us that gas was on the way. Um, they had told us that uh, the roads were clearing up ahead. They told us they were going to open up the other side, the, the inbound side of the freeways to traffic to relieve the congestion. It took us 23 and a half hours to travel what would have taken us 45 minutes. Um, the government told us wrong. There were no trucks. You can't, you can't pump gas into your car from a tank truck easily. Uh, they weren't going to give away gas for free. Um, anyway, we listened and we were told that we could exit the freeway whenever we wanted, but that was not the case. The government locked down the exits and uh, we were trapped and we learned from that. Uh, this time around, the government told us that, well, we're going to do rolling blackouts. The Texas Energy, uh, the commission that handles energy on the Texas grid <clears throat> said, yeah, this, this will be handled by rolling blackouts. You'll be out of power for a couple hours and then we'll turn your power on for a couple hours and that'll last a day or two. Well, we're in day three of power outages and it's projected to go to Saturday now with rolling blackouts. Um, so that means a lot of people are losing their food, losing stuff that's uh, you know, in their freezers. And, um, had a, and, and I made the mistake once again of listening to the government and trusting that this would be the case. Um, I wish I hadn't. I would have quickly then um, acquired a generator and because I have access to a generator, I've never used it, I've never started it, and I don't know where the instruction manual is. But had I not trusted the government, I could have taken care of that earlier. So you know, that's a lesson learned and that's on me. So as it is, we might lose some of our food in the freezer. Um, and that would be sad because that represents a lot of my garden harvest. 
a lot of my wife's hard work, um, but I listened to the government and now it's really too late. <clears throat> so that's one lesson that I've learned with the corruption and the various agencies now becoming apparent as this Texas disaster unrolls. It's, uh, it's, it's really something that I should have anticipated. Another thing I learned is that, that my water storage is very necessary. When the electrical system goes down, eventually the water's gonna go out because most of our water systems are powered by electric pumps that fill the towers while we sleep at night and supply pressure to our neighborhoods. Uh, well, everyone's draining their faucets to keep their pipes from bursting and drain to the tower. And um, yeah, now that's, uh, there's no water. Well, they obviously brought a generator in the second day, pumped up the tower, and we've got water again. But there's another thing you have to consider. When the power is out in a widespread region, water treatment plants can't treat the water say, to, to a, a, a safe level. And so all the cities around, even the city of Houston, is saying our water is not drinkable unless you boil it for two minutes at a ro rolling boil. Well, I mean, that's, that's uh, something that you know happens. A lot of people don't know that. Um, fortunately, in the past with hurricanes, uh, I've planned for clean water and I invested in a Berkey filter system, the biggest one they have. And so that keeps us in clear water, uh, clean water. And I did fill it up and made sure it was topped off. And I uh, have been cycling water through there and storing it in big giant pots. So we've got plenty of water uh, and the water is running. But if the water goes out again, you know, what are you going to do? Um, I've been collecting water out in the back for flushing toilets should the water go out. but. Um, one lesson I've learned from this is that my plans that I have for self-sufficiency and a little, more, a little more sufficiency need to be implemented quicker. I have three giant rain barrels that are just sitting not used. And my plan for the past year has been to put in a water catchment system. Um, I haven't done it. So those barrels are useless to me right now. Uh, they do have water in them, but they're so heavy they're immovable, and that water is still frozen solid. So, yeah, that's on me again. I need to learn to practice what I uh, design sooner and not delay. But water is very important. You've got to think about water and, um, and implement things quick. There's another element of a regional catastrophe that feels dystopian, um, and it's communications. I... Uh, uh, have no internet when the power is out. I have no communication. Most of the cell towers for days were not uh, up and running. And so even through your cell service, uh, communications was spotty at best. And so it was hard to get news. I sent my wife and Samuel to my in-laws house where they do have power. And from there, I was hoping that they could fill me in with the weather updates and wh what's the temperature gonna be. Uh, this is vital information to surviving through um, a catastrophe, a failure of the infrastructure. Um, I mean, golly, this is even during a time of pandemic, so it's like really bad. And after, I'll tell you something, after the freeze happened, after um, we had 14 degrees here in the subtropics in zone 9A on the Texas coast, you could go outside and it smelled dead. All the dead plants and foliage and grasses and weeds all of those, as they thawed out, they gave off, they, they off-gassed a pretty foul smell. And all of the generators running, you could just smell deadness. Inside the house, well, we were, we were running some candles, a little bit of oil lamps. Uh, the gas has been running all night long in the fireplace. Um, and so the, the air in the house is, is, needs to be aired out, but I can't let the heat out. So, you know, this feels like a, a bad situation. But back to communications. I thought, well, I don't have internet, I don't have connectivity on my phone, I don't have a way to power things up once the charges run out. So I learned that I needed to, to, I need to in the future have two things. One, I need to have grid independent charging ability. In other words, I need to buy some sort of a battery system that I can solar power enough to power my phone, enough to charge it up. So that's something I need to invest in. Um, and then at one point I remembered, oh yeah, I planned for this. I have a transistor radio. I have an old radio, battery powered, two double A's in this thing. And it covers FM, AM, and shortwave. So I can get the weathered stations. I can get shortwave, which is often useful in times of crisis. Um, but I have not maintained that radio. It's been in my garage sitting out here in the heat. And when I put batteries in, new batteries, and cleaned the terminals and everything, it didn't work. So it, I was out without communications. 
I had to rely on traveling to my in-laws house to get internet connectivity and watch the news. And so that's one thing I've learned. Communications in a time of crisis is vital, especially if it's a natural disaster and it's ongoing and you need news, you need to have a weather update, you need to be able to plan for what's coming in the night if it's gonna be cold. In time of a hurricane, you need, you, need, you need to know when the water system is safe or unsafe to drink. You need to have information on the, the power situation. Is, is the power coming back on in a matter of hours, days, or is it gonna be weeks or months? You need to know these things. And so communication is something I've learned. Again, that's on me. And the last thing that I have learned through this crisis is I need to practice better food storage. All of my harvest from the garden, I was relying on electricity to freeze and keep. Uh, we did put some things by um, and I, we did dry some things, uh, but it's not sustenance food. It's not food that you can um, rely on for calories when you need calories. Now, on the other hand, I do believe in, in putting food by and storing up plenty of things that do not rely on uh, refrigeration, lots of dried beans, lots of dried food, lots of canned food, lots of canned meats, things that can sustain you. And uh, I've always suggested you have at least a month's worth of food that you can eat somewhere in your house uh, stored away, and uh, we've got that. But my harvest, man, I gotta learn some ways and practice those ways of canning my food and preserving the harvest for um, more abundance from my garden. I haven't been doing that as much as I should. And that's something I've learned. If you have a garden, that's great. But when the temperatures come in and kill your garden and wipe out your harvest and, and uh, knock your power out, well, your garden's just a plot of ground now. It's not producing anything anymore. Uh, the potential is there to lose your entire crop. The potential is there that you're gonna lose everything you've stored by freezing. And well, that's just a waste of an entire growing season. So um, that's one thing I've learned. I'm going to make measures to learn canning and preserving, fermenting more and putting things by that way. So there we go, more lessons learned uh, in a time where survival skills are actually uh, real and needed. Yeah, this isn't the end of the world. It's not uh, the, the, big, the big collapse, but it was a minor collapse. It was a statewide regional collapse and it's uncovering the fragility and the um, sensitivity of the networks that, re that we rely on as people for our daily survival. You don't know how you're gonna do until you're tested. This has been a pretty good test and we're still in the midst of it. So I think we're gonna make it just fine. Uh, we are preparedness minded enough and uh, have enough knowledge to know how to not die, not get sick from drinking bad water. And uh, you know, that's not how everyone is. The news, in this area is that people have already died. There have been uh, more than, we're in double digits in how many people have died because of a lack of knowledge, a lack of a, the ability to take care of themselves in hard times. Uh, there was a, um, a family that decided to go out and sit in their car and turn the heater on and warm up because no power in the house, uh, century record temperatures outside uh, things that we in, in the subtropics are unprepared for, well, they went out and sat in their car like, like you would expect is a good idea. Unfortunately, they didn't back the car out of the garage and they died. Carbon monoxide kills. Another family brought their barbecue pit into their garage to warm up. Again, uh, several of them died, several of them are critical condition. Carbon monoxide poisoning. You, you, don't, you don't have knowledge and it's gonna, it could cost you your life. And so, I encourage you, please read, please uh, read broadly, look into things, understand how stuff works, understand how your home works and the water system that you have and the electricity grid that you're on. Understand these and how to manage and preserve your house when these things fail. Many people in my neighborhood, dozens and dozens of people, their pipes broke. My neighbor who I took um, vegetables to last week or earlier this week, uh, the widow that lives next door, her pipes broke and there was water shooting out of the weep holes in her brick. Um, and her uh, shutoff valve was jammed, so she had to call someone to come and shut the water off at the main. And Wow, it's just, these things are happening because people don't know how to manage themselves in a crisis. And so I encourage you, study some of this stuff. Don't laugh at the preppers. Go learn from them. Watch some YouTube channels that teach you how to take care of yourself when the grid goes down, 
when infrastructure collapses, because you might need it someday. With the way our nation's going, it's looking like this is gonna be uh, more and more frequent. Um, yeah, that's another rant for another day, but well, there's what I've learned. There's what I hope I can pass on to you. If, if any of this information is helpful or useful, um, please like our video. Subscribe to our channel. We're getting to get back to gardening, hopefully this coming week. We're gonna put our seeds, uh, st start hardening off our tomato seedlings who are struggling. They've been in the dark and in the cold for about four days now, but they look like they're gonna make it. We're gonna harden those off next week, have some sunshine next week, get back to actual gardening videos. We got a clean slate. We might as well start over now and uh, take this opportunity to begin our spring garden. Happy gardening to you. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.